Last week, I was uh, sitting next to John Pearce, um, our patron, at his annual grand final eve luncheon at the Emerald Hotel in Melbourne, and we talked about lots and lots of things to do with the season. Um, but the one thing that stuck in my mind that he talked about was that he, how proud he was of the fact that the Brisbane Lions have regained the respect of the football world um, due to the way that we played our footy in 2019. And uh, I sensed how proud he was of the team and um, it was just great to see someone who loves our club so much um, say those comments. And uh, I know that you know, chatting to Lee Matthews and Alistair Lynch and Jonathan Brown and Simon Black in recent weeks, uh, they feel the same way. Um, they're really proud of what the team's done this year and they're looking forward to more of that in the years ahead. And I haven't spoken to Kevin Murray, but I know he's here tonight and I'm sure he'd say the same thing if I asked him. Um, on a night like this, it's um, worth looking back briefly on what the team's achieved in 2019. And that's not to bask in the glory. Um, it's just to enjoy and reflect on the progress that we've made because we need to do that. You can't just ignore it. It's been a great year. So with the second youngest list and the third least experienced in terms of games played, we achieved the following things. Uh, we played finals for the first time in 10 years. Um, We won 10 games at the Gabba, and that's our best result since 2004 when we won 12. We won 16 home and away games, and the last time we did that was 2004. We went from 15th on the ladder in 2018 to second in 2019, which is the equal biggest climb of any team in AFL history. Funnily enough, the Brisbane Lions in 1999 finished third after finishing 16th in 1998. 1998 is the other one, so it's a record we hold as a club. Um, going from five wins last year to 16 this year is the second biggest jump ever in AFL history. Um, and it's the first time since 2004 that we finished second on the ladder at the end of the home and away. On top of that, we had the, we were the number one offensive team in the AFL this year, and our defence was the seventh best, which is a huge jump when you think that 2016 we conceded on average 132 points a game. This year it was 77, so we've improved nearly 10 goals defensively. So, absolutely brilliant. Our percentage jumped from 89% last year to 118, so that's nearly 30%. That's an incredible effort and we won six games on the road. Um, twice in Melbourne, that great win in Adelaide against Port Adelaide. We beat the Hawks in Launceston, GWS at their ground, <coughs> and the Gold Coast. So that's a win in every state bar Perth, and we lost there after the siren by a point. So that's a great year by the boys. Um, we won nine consecutive games from round 14 through to round 22 and you know people are saying oh it's going to be a harder year next year they're going to come after you well I reckon they worked out by the halfway mark of the year that we weren't a bad team so they were coming after us in the second half of the year and we were able to win nine in a row so I'm really proud of the way the boys went about that. And the great thing about it was you the fans returned to the Gabba I think uh, I think during the season we had four games where we had 30,000 plus people attend our match and I think our last three games were all above 30,000 and I know the players really appreciate playing in front of, of a crowd like that and get a tremendous lift out of it so thank you all of you for turning up and, and supporting the team. Um, we had five players selected in the Australian squad of 40. Lockie Neal, Harris Andrews, Charlie Cameron, Hugh McCluggage and Dane Zorko. Three made the final team. That's a brilliant effort by our club. Well done to those boys. Um, five of our under-22 players made the AFL Players Association under-22 squad. Harris Andrews, Hugh McCluggage, Jared Berry, 
Alex Witherden and Eric Hipwood and four made the final 22 with Harris Andrews, no surprise, being named as captain. So uh, <laughs> great that our young players were able to do that. And as mentioned before, our NEFL team went through the season undefeated and won the grand final by 76 points over Southport. Brilliant effort, boys. Well done. There are a lot of other things that I can mention as, as well, but the bottom line is that it's been the best year our club has had in a long, long time. So why has this happened? Well, in my opinion, it's been the coordinated, persistent work of a lot of teams of people within the club and the leadership provided by our president, Andrew Wellington, our CEO, Greg Swan, and our G general manager of footy, David Noble. The three of you have a clear vision and plan to make our club successful. You've selected highly competent team oriented people to work here, and you've shown the trust and patience necessary to give the plan a chance to work. I can't thank the three of you enough for taking this approach. Stability and keeping your nerve under pressure is critical to club success, and you each understand this. That's great leadership in my view. So thanks very much, guys. Appreciate it. Um, I'd like to briefly acknowledge um, the teams of people within the club who have assisted this process of growth that we've gone through over the last three years. And um, I'll probably repeat some of the things that Andrew said, but I still think it's important that I personally acknowledge these groups of people. So, firstly, to our coaches, um, I know I won a personal award the other day and it was nice to receive, but my major thrill was, I think, more than anything else, that the reason I won Coach of the Year is because I work with a brilliant group of coaches and for, for me, it's more that our coaching group is the coaching group of the year rather than me being the Coach of the Year. So. Um, <laughs> And that's not just for their work over the last year, it's for their work over the last three years. It's been a pretty long process and that's how I want you guys to view it. To our strength and conditioning, sports science and medical department, I'll give you some stats, all right? We're the number one team in the AFL for performance after, in second halves of games. We're the best team in the AFL for that. So that means we're a really, really fit group of players who can finish out games and we could never do that a couple of years ago and this year number one in that area so uh, and the other thing is that we're AFL one for the least number of games lost to injury so when you put those two together the work that's been done by that department of people has been absolutely outstanding and to Damien Austin and Peter Blanche who head up those areas uh, thank you so much for being so cutting edge with your programs and our players benefit enormously from your work, there's no doubt about that. Um, to our football administration team of people, um, we're a well-connected and coordinated club due to the hard work of people like Nicole Duncan and Kent Papworth and Amanda Webb and Andrew Walsh and Caitlin Brady. Um, these people, along with uh, all of our part-time volunteers, do a brilliant job and you can easily tell that their heart is fully into being absolute experts in their roles. So thank you very much to those people for the work that they do and coordinating us and making sure that everything runs very, very smoothly at all times. Um, our player excellence and wellbeing department, that's a big gobful, I know. Did I get that right, Krauss? I hope I did. Um, there's a survey that the AFL Players Association do with players each year. Um, and they sort of check out with the players um, their workplace satisfaction. Um, in 2016, we were number 18 in that. Um, this year, we're number one. Um, that's been a staggering turnaround, really, and well done to Andrew Crowell and your team. Um, that result says it all. To our game analysis and our IT department, um, the information you research and produce to help us, coaches, help us coach our players effectively 
is absolutely outstanding. You work highly effectively in a time-pressured environment. And you do it with a smile on your face and a can-do attitude. So uh, us coaches are very, very grateful for the work that you do. To our academy staff, um, you continue to work hard to produce players for our club. You've got to be proud of the progress of guys like Harris Andrews and Eric Hipwood and Ben Keys and Connor Ballenden and Jack Payne. And there's a lot more of those sorts of guys to come. So uh, thank you for your work. To our list management and recruiting team, um, you'd all have to agree the quality of the players that we've drafted and traded into our club over the, over the past few seasons has been outstanding. Their Im impact on our performance has been profound. And kudos to Dom, Steve and your staff for great judgement and great strategic planning. Um, tremendous effort, I think. Um, to our Sammy Lord, who's in charge of our Victorian operations. Um, <laughs> the way you work to keep our club connected with its Victorian members is really fantastic to witness and uh, your enthusiasm is infectious. Uh, to the partners of all who work at our club, um, I want to say a big thank you. In our industry, the jobs aren't nine to five. They involve a lot of after hours work and a lot of weekend work. So thanks so much for your understanding and support and I hope that you got as much enjoyment out of the season as what uh, us coaches did and, and everybody else did around the footy club. To the board, um, thanks for your support um, and trust in our football department to make the progress necessary to make our club relevant again in the AFL. You don't, you don't interfere, you just back us up and you give us what we need and we really appreciate that. To Swanee and all your staff upstairs, um, thank you for the thoughtful and respectful way you work with our players and staff. Um, we, we are grateful for this and understand fully how we've got to work together to achieve the commercial and brand outcomes that we need to help our club grow. So um, um, we love working with you and uh, I hope everybody upstairs understands that you do a great job and we appreciate it. Um, to the media people who are here tonight, um, there's no doubt you are partners of ours um, in our journey forward. Uh, you paint the picture of our club to the general public and uh, as such you've really helped us improve our image in recent seasons and so thank you for your support and hopefully we can continue in that way. Um, to our members and supporters, um, I know Andrew has already thanked you but I would like to add my voice to just how important you are in the process of making our club great again. Um, we exist to be a successful club and to make you proud. So thanks for the energy and the spirit that you bring. Um, I'd also like to thank the coffee club too who uh, sponsor the, the coaching group. I, I needed to mention those especially. Um, finally to our players, um, thanks for your effort, your resilience, your grit, your coachability and your desire to improve that you've shown over the last three years, not just this year. Uh, you now know that we can compete with the best and your belief has grown. Uh, you've come a long way in a relative sh relatively short space of time and you should take time out tonight to enjoy and reflect on what you've have achieved in 2019. My final message to the players though is this, and to everybody in the room I guess. We were just two hours from a potential grand final berth this year, four hours from a potential premiership. We made it to the 204th game of the season. The grand final was the 207th, so close. But now we've got to do lots of work to give ourselves another chance. There's no doubt that the things that are really worth chasing in life involve pressure. That's what makes them so rewarding. So embrace the challenge and the expectation that will come next season. Keep improving and crave the opportunities to test your limits as a player and our limits as a team. Use the disappointment and frustration of being so close this year to, arise, to rise to another level next year. Thanks very much.